Now let's say I want to register a new host name on an existing domain. So this is a little bit different. If I wanted a domain name, I needed to you know, go pay money, uh, potentially, to someone who would, who would register that domain name for me with the top level domain. If I want a new host name, there's, there's two paths that I go down. If I don't own the domain name, then I'm in trouble. Either I need to talk to someone to get permission, or I'm just totally out of luck. So I can't go out and set up a new website that ends with .google.com. That makes a lot of sense, right? And this is an important part of how domain names are managed because when you see a domain name that ends with .google.com, you associate that with Google. You, you have some trust or some familiarity or something that comes along with seeing .google.com or seeing .amazon.com at the end of the domain name. If anybody could register new hosts on those existing domain names, the internet would be a very confusing place. You would go to a site, it would end with amazon.com, and you be scratching your head and thinking, does Amazon actually run this site, or am I about to get scammed, or what's going on here? So that's an important way uh, that the, that hierarchical nature of how domain names are managed, how host names are managed, is important for establishing trust relationships and familiarity uh, that we have with existing domain names. So for example, if I wanted to get a csc.buffalo.edu uh, domain name, I can do that. I'm a faculty member here. I can go talk to Christian or Ken. I can say, hey, you know, I'd, I'd like um, internet-class.csc.buffalo.edu. Can I get that? And they, would, uh, they might grumble a little bit, but they would say, OK. Um, and they would set it up for me. Now, on the other hand, if I operate the domain, then adding a new host name is really easy. So uh, I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, again, I'm using this domains.google.com uh, product. This is um, something that I use to manage some of the domain names that I that I manage. Um, and I mean, there are other there are other tools like this. There there's GoDaddy. There's a bunch of other things out there. So so whatever. Find something that you like. Uh, I happen to like this tool. I think it's pretty simple. Uh, so you know you can see. So here are the domains that I operate. Uh, this is for my OS class. This is for a project that we're working on, OptiWiFi.org. And here's InternetClass.org. That's the site uh, domain that hosts this website and some other things. So if I click on this. Okay, uh, it shows me that I have a custom configuration. And then uh, in order to add a host, I have to reconfigure the DNS or the domain name service uh, settings for this particular, uh, particular domain. So, oh, this is tough to see because it's, okay, here we go. So down here, what you can see is that here are the host names that I've already created on this network. So I have, a, I have a host called Dev, I have a host called Discourse, I have a host called Experiment, I also have a host called www. So you know, those correspond with, if I go to, this is dev.internetclass.org, it looks a lot like the main site, it's something that we use for testing. This is experiment.internetclass.org, it's still running the site that we set up uh, for an activity recently. This is discourse.internetclass.org. So all these host names exist in this domain and they exist because I've created them. So if I wanted to create a new one, I would go here and I'd add a new entry. Now notice here that uh, you know the, the whole point of the domain name system is to translate host names into IP addresses. So I own this uh, domain name but to set up a host name, I also need an IP address. And so for each one of these host names, what I've done is it's being pointed at an IP address. And one thing that's interesting that you'll notice is that three of these host names, dev, discourse, and www, are all pointed at the same machine. And this is something that I can do. I can actually set up a web server to serve different sites from the same physical machine. Uh, if I needed a new machine for every website in the world, that would, that would be a problem. And we'd probably have even fewer IP addresses that would be available. Um, but what's happening here is, re regardless of whether you go to dev, experiment, or dub, 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 you're communicating with the same web server. And what the web server is doing is it's looking at that host name that you send along with your request, and it's figuring out which site to serve you. So if you go to discourse.internetclass.org, uh, you're actually visiting the same IP address. You're communicating with the same machine, but because you're asking for discourse as opposed to dub, 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 it sends you a different site. Um, okay, so this is how you register a host name. Pretty simple. Again, if you if you have these tools that are out there, there's great management utilities for managing uh, host names. You can do this pretty simply. Um, if you don't, then you might have to talk to somebody who operates the domain name that, that you're trying to add a host name to. Um, the other thing that's important here is once you, so if you want to purchase a domain name, you can do that 
for free. Uh, sorry, you can do that. You can't do that for free, but you can you can pay a little money. You can do it, and you're done. Once you need a host name, you need something to point that at. Frequently, what you end up pointing that at is an IP address. It's not always the case. There's also ways to resolve a um, domain name to another domain name. This is what's called known as a canonical name or a C name. But at this point, you know, this is when you actually start to interact with machines, right? I need to, you know, this needs to probably point at a computer in a lot of cases. So here's how uh, you register host names. And if, get a domain name first or talk to the person who operates that domain name, uh, pick a host name, and then set the host name up so that it resolves to either an IP address or in some cases to another host name.